Hello, everybody. Today is November 1st, 2017, and here we are with our weekly energy update, Tamara and Ruth. Hello, Ruth. Good afternoon, Tamara. Good to see you. Well, it's good to see you too. You know, it's snowing outside. It's completely, it's a, it's a white land out there. It started to snow early this morning. I mean, and it really so, is amazing. Here it is in Southern California. We're cloudy, but you're snowing. Okay. <laughs> yes. Yes. So hello, everybody in YouTube land. So today is November 1st. Uh, this is our first weekly update for uh, November. And um you know, Ruth, the thing that's really coming up for me right now is just that very soon, in a few days, we're going to turn the clocks, is it, we're going to turn them forward. And so this is what I call our countdown to the light. And, it, and for me, it really starts the 1st of November. And I think I'm going to do uh, um, a 90-day uh, light awakening challenge on my radio show because uh, there are some questions we can ask ourselves but it's almost like we're taking a candle down into the cellar we're going deep this month and that's one of the things I wanted to talk about today because I feel like like you said there's a lot of Scorpio energy before we went on and it, it's taking us into the cellar I think right now <laughs> I like that image of yeah taking and you really do need your lantern or your candle or your 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 high powered flashlight yeah in in our contemporary times to go into the cellar and i think the cellar in scorpio terms there's a there are a lot of little piles in the cellar and and we've forgotten what they are and so i think it's really important that we go down there slowly but going down well and you know it's interesting because i feel like with so many you know so much scorpio influence right now that this is a time to really move into emotional truth and that it is a very subjective thing because it's emotional and so what feels authentic and truthful for us emotionally may not we may not want to waste a lot of energy it's interesting with um Mars and Libra, we could maybe waste a little energy trying to get agreement with others about what our emotional uh, reality is. But I, I really encourage people watching this to just own your feelings because I think Scorpio really promises a deep healing for each of us. Do you know what I mean with that? Uh, yes, I've had, I've had that experience in terms of taking a look at, you just referred to the emotional content that all of us are faced with. But, you know, there's something, even though we think, no, but, uh, another, let's go back momentarily to Mars mm -hmm. and Libra and Venus and Libra, getting a room, agreement with other people. The agreement, what we see mirrored, actually, what's going on deep within ourselves is often a, is a mirror of those oppositional kinds of situations that occur since we're dealing with libra we know we're dealing with relating we're dealing with communicating with other people and the things that we are in conflict about because scorpio dearly loves to go into that emotional material which is conflictual in many ways and if we are still not wanting to see it it will show up in our encounters with other people. So I, I really, really think that it is important to recognize the feelings, but to also recognize that it shows up in our outer world. Well, and an interesting side note to that, as you were talking, I was just reflecting on some feelings this week that, you know, I mean, we all have this sort of, um, cycle that we go through with our feelings and you know some of it's internal and some of it we're noticing out there and that when we uh deny how we really feel it goes underground and it's um then it really does pop up in circumstances with other people especially and and it gets bigger and bigger until we can really 
uh, really deal with it. And what I've noticed this week is with feelings that I've had, they're almost like blowing um, soap bubbles. You know, I'll feel, I'll, I'll identify a feeling, like say it's irritation. Let's put that one out there. Um, and, and as soon as I let myself really feel the feeling of it, whoops, <laughs> um, it will, it's like collapses in my hands. It kind of goes away after you've acknowledged it and felt it and said, oh, I'm feeling this feeling. Suddenly it, it, it disappears, it pops, and then it's a different feeling. And I think this is why it's so subjective because it can be a little confusing if we look at it with the mind. Because if I say, oh, I was so irritated, and then I'm like, no, I'm not irritated, I'm, I'm something else. And it's like an energy that keeps morphing and changing within us. Well, you know, as you were speaking about the energy morphing, when we allow, as you just pointed out, we allow ourselves to experience that intense, because it's energy. Everything is vibration and everything is energy. And once we free it up, we actually get to use it for something that we can actually choose. When we suppress it, that is, we're, we're doing it oftentimes unconsciously and subconsciously, mm -hmm. and it is rendered of no use to us. But the moment we can make an agreement that I'm going to face the fact that I haven't been speaking to my sibling in quite a while, and I'm going to, maybe I'm not going to go over to that person's house today, but at least I am going to acknowledge that we have been having this situation between us. Mm -hmm. And that immediately frees up some energy to at least take some action steps. And that's our Mars and Libra right there, to be able to take some action steps on what has been suppressed in the, in the uh, often in the unconscious that's rising up to the subconscious, which is becoming conscious. I wanted to say that, uh sometimes when I have suppressed an emotion or am in denial of it, it will not only pop up in another person, either toward me or I'll observe it, you know, that person toward another person. But um, sometimes I think these emotions, it could even, even be something like anger. Like say somebody's trespassing against your, um, your uh, boundaries and you know they're doing that, but you've given them permission to do it, like like perhaps a boss or a um, you know just somebody, an authority figure maybe. Um, and so what happens every time you have to interact in that situation is you feel this feeling, but it may not even be feel like anger because you've made an agreement. Oh well, I can't be angry at an authority figure or at this person, or I personally, you know, I'm not allowed to be angry anyway. Um, and what happens is um, often I think that will morph into a different kind of feeling, like a fear feeling or a panic feeling or um, let's just, just leave it with the fear because I feel like that, that can be, it's important to get to the underneath what is really happening underneath because sometimes you're very angry about something that you are allowing to have happen in your life, but you're not allowing yourself to feel that, that feeling as anger. So it's morphing into something else. Well, it morphs, um, it, it morphs into something else in terms of where each one of us stands because we have some questions. We have some questions of what do I value for myself and what do I see as being valuable out here in terms of whether someone else can hold power over me because I consider what the carrot that they have to be more valuable. Mm -hmm. And I, I see myself as needing some of that carrot. Mm -hmm. And to the extent that it makes us push down our own natural inclination, um, because I, I even see this, because one of the things that Scorpio does is it, there is self-preservation. Mm -hmm embodied within the sign of Scorpio. Hmm. And Scorp when we push that self-preservation down, it is very costly. Yes. 
some questions that people may have, and I'll have a lot more of these on my radio show and through the month, um, just to deal with this um, the cycle of the light going inward for most of us, getting less toward the the um, um, the solstice. Um, what a question that I I like that you talked about self preservation because I think Scorpio really is not afraid to look at like what's killing me. You know, what am I allowing in my life that disempowers me so deeply that it's killing off my life force? And how can my emotions be telling me the, the, the signs and signals and the wisdoms that, about this power dynamic that, we're, that I'm in? Because I think this is the time of year that allows us to really go into that. And it's okay to ask that question. What am I allowing in my life that's killing me a little bit every day? or that's killing me by pressing down on that essential energy and that um, vital energy. Because I think of Scorpio is very interested in how it can regenerate what's killing it. You know, am I experiencing less vital energy than I could because I'm giving my power away or it's being siphoned off? And, you know, as you were speaking uh, about that siphoning off, uh, another interplay is with, Uranus in Aries, it's in the late part, but it's still in, in, in Aries. And if we, we, we don't do the work, we don't do that deep inner, mm -hmm. quote unquote, in being in the dark, because the dark has a beauty all of its own, because it helps us to learn how to discern what we don't want from what needs to be, what we really need to own for ourselves. But Uranus, well, what it'll do is it'll say, I've got, I'm gonna wipe everything out because it's, it's the planet of sudden happenings. And if we don't go ahead and make a decision with oneself to do this clearing out, it can potentially just wipe out everything in our immediate life situation. Yeah, kind of like a zap. It can uh -huh. zap, you know, zap a short circuit. Yeah. Big zap. <laughs> yeah. Well, um, and we also have this week um, Uranus opposing Venus. Uranus conjunct the moon opposing Venus. Ah! So there may be this, uh, you know, oppositions always create, it's almost like to me a slingshot effect. It's like we're either here or we're here. There's, we're pulling, there's a tension between two aspects. Well, when you have, I, I think when you have those two aspects, it is me and them. Yeah. And every, whether we want to believe it or not, everything emanates from me. It does not start with the them. Mm -hmm. And uh, if, if we look around us collectively, in our in our in our society and throughout the world, mm -hmm. each each of the me's, each individual, whether we want to or not, we're having to tell new stories to ourselves. Because mm -hmm. Scorpio says, "Let's wipe out the stuff that's not working anymore." You're going to have to tell a new story. Mercury Mercury is in Scorpio. What does it What does it say? It says communication, both from in here because we're going to have to put out a new story out there. Well, it's interesting too, because Scorpio is transformative. It means like um, that you change from the caterpillar into the butterfly. It's, um, it's not just putting a new coat of paint on something. It's really changing from the inside out. And so maybe one of the stories, interesting you use that, because I, I want to bring up my cards. Um, sometimes a story the way that we're seeing, say, let's just take a relationship and another person. You'll be seeing that person through the haze of the story you have, and it can be any story. You know, it can be a story of this person hasn't come through for me, or it can be this person I need to save me, or um, this person is too fragile. It can be any story. And as soon as you're willing, it, it's not that you have to necessarily end the relationship, but end your the lens of the story because if, especially if the story is prohibiting you from something that that wants to regenerate in you that's that's stopping you from being all you can be 
that's where I think Scorpio is very interested and Uranus is very interested in just zapping that out of there because there's a, there's a higher self for each of us that's in control that is wanting us to grow and not wanting us to feel stuck and stagnated. And, you know, wanting us to grow, this is, this, th these are daily because we often think, particularly when we're looking at astrology and I'm, I'm so glad for our, our listeners and our viewers because they come because they're telling us something. They're saying, I want to grow my life. And it's not every it's not every five years. It's a daily process. So everything that we're talking about is a daily process. And when we have a concentrated dose, because that's really what you know, uh, Scorpio the fixedness means is really zeroing in on those changes. This is the this is a critical time mm -hmm. to take a look at one's life and say, okay, I'm going to make I'm going to create a little ritual around maybe one central thing don't try to do everything mm -hmm. but just take one thing and begin that process of clearing yeah i'm really glad that you mentioned clearing um let's i'm going to share my cards and then we'll let's let's weave these in so what i got for people and my intention with this um well let's just start with where we are right now november 1st this first week what i got was the queen of cups and this has to do, and you can hardly see that there's even a form there, really, uh, or a human form. And this is the feminine mastery of emotions. And um, I also got the Knight of Cups. And the interpretation I'm using with this is that this is an energy, a vehicle that is bringing us into the wisdom of our um, um, emotional, intuitive knowing. And that, again, this is very subjective. This is the deep part of, of you who are listening. This is not something where you can grade yourself on the outside and have it be on a scale. But speaking of stories, I got the Three of Swords called Sorrow. And this is, this is about what's killing you. So if there are people listening to this, um, I, I, I know this is happening with clients that I speak to. I'm seeing this in people's lives right now. The Scorpio energy is really asking not only what's killing you emotionally and, and stopping you from being your full expression of who you are, but where do you think you've already been damaged beyond repair? Because that's a question Scorpio would love you to look at because Scorpio does repair. Scorpio is the surgeon. And I feel that uh, because of the night, situations are being brought forward to us in our emotional natures to heal those old stories and those broken parts, so-called broken. And, and I believe deep in our, our spirits and in our souls, we are whole, but we must realize, <clears throat> excuse me, on this plane of existence, it's just what you said, um, we perceive, it's a perception, it's our filters. Yes. I'm going to actually go with your three of swords. And we did not pull the cards at the same. I mean, we did pull the cards at the same time, but we didn't know what each other was pulling. I got the four of swords upside down. This yeah. is um, from the Sacred Rose Tarot. Mm -hmm. But again, here, here is the conflict that we've all been privy to in one shape or form. We've been warrioring and we've been battling and it's in reverse. And basically it says that we, as you pointed out, Tamara, we really, really are being called upon to put the sword, the swords are put down, but at the same time, we have to realize what that has done to us. As you just pointed out, it really has caused a lot of anguish and pain. And so we all need to face that. But I have a couple of other cards that will help us out. I have the temperance card, mm. which is a major arcana. So that says, if we are willing to really relinquish all of that old stuff, Scorpio stuff, 
um, our healing can begin mm -hmm. with, um, with, with some creative kinds of things, with some communication, just relaxing. So this temperance card is really, really, really powerful in giving us hope. And then I got the Queen of Pentacles, and Pentacles always says that um, if we get our foundation, and particularly for women, the Queen, because you got the Queen and I got the Queen. So if we put those together, mm -hmm. um, I'm seeing that part of our new story is being willing to be sovereign, because she's a sovereign, to be sovereign, to be the Queen of our own lives. I always like the queen of pentacles as whenever I get that for me, it's like telling me you have a queendom lady own it. And, and, and you can make this happen and you don't need to give your power to anybody else. You have all the resources to uh, manifest that world. And, and I just, I just want to say that, um, and this is sort of on the psychic level and also looking at our cards that for a lot of people listening, they're long held battles that are based on stories of brokenness that people are listening to still. And what if the thing that could die for you this week is the story that you are broken and then you have to compensate for the brokenness and say, well, you know, I, I was broken back when I was five. And so, you know, that's why I have this issue. Well, in order to come into a queen like, um, space where you are owning, you know, the royal cards own their space. They have a queendom or a kingdom. Um, you have to make a choice right now to to not be, um, not believe in the brokenness. Not believe in the brokenness. I think that that's a big part of what people are struggling with right now is what do we really believe is true that is absolutely not true and anyone who has seen somebody go through recovery uh, from drugs and alcohol or um, even people who have had a, a religious awakening or some other spiritual awakening you see that they you can become a new person in this life you don't have to die to become that new person and reincarnate you can do it now and I think that that may be, for whatever reason, a message that people need to hear right now. I, I totally agree with you because each one of us has the total potential. We, we're given that potential, but you just made the point. We have to make a decision to accept that. There's, there's, and I want to refer back to the me and to, to the them. Everything starts with the me, and if we, we can make a choice to accept what the them says, you know, what everybody says out there about your life, and that's where all of the confusion and the battling happens because you're going against self, and Scorpio says, no, there's only you, and everything emanates from you first, and that's not being, uh, people think, well, that's being selfish. Mm -hmm. It, it is selfish to the extent that if we don't refer to self, then nothing else can really um, connect or bloom. You made the point about being the butterfly. We cannot bloom. Nobody else can bloom for us. Just like nobody can be born for you, you know? Yeah. And, and so, so this is such a personal time. I really am excited about the Scorpio energy for all of us because this is the time of year where, where the sap is going inside the tree and for us as well, our spiritual sap, our energies are pulling in and please let that happen for you this, this fall and let, let this transformation occur because by the time the new year comes around and spring is there, you want to feel almost like reborn a little bit. And so I think this is a very important time. Ruth, I want to let people know, too, that uh, on Thursday the 2nd, uh, we have, uh, well, first of all, we have a Facebook group called uh, Weekly Energy Update with Tamara and Ruth, and you can find that on Facebook. It is a closed group, so when you go in, people won't see 
things posting otherwhere, other, otherwise outside of the group. So you have to ask to be admitted. So please do come in. And it's a place where we're going to share weekly videos and any number of things. And we're going to do a live video tomorrow, which is Thursday. Today is Wednesday, the 1st. Um, and that's at 1130 p.m. Uh, Pacific time. So if you can join us. A.M. 11.30 a.m. Pacific, and that is in the Facebook group. That is a special uh, live presentation that you and I are going to do and talk about Jupiter through your horoscope, through the houses. So um, Jupiter's in Scorpio, so this deep excavation is going on for each of us, but maybe in a slightly different place in our charts. And so we want to really hone in on that for you. So that's a very special thing coming up tomorrow. So we hope you can join us. And give us a little slack because this is our, our experimentation time. So yeah, but it's going to be fun. It's going to be fun. And you can comment and you can look at your own chart while we're talking and it'll be really fun. Um, anything else, Ruth, before we go this week? Well, I look forward to seeing everybody tomorrow. Come it'll on be over. It'll be it'll be really fun. So uh, we hope you enjoyed this energy update for this week. And, you know, put on your seatbelts, everybody, because Scorpio's in the house. And we will see you tomorrow at 1130 a.m. Pacific in the Facebook group. And I'll post a link uh, to the group also below this video so that you can just click in there and um, be able to come. So. Yeah. Have a wonderful week, everybody. Bye, Ruth.